Hello friends, it's Nomad Brad coming to you from my box truck. Today's very exciting. I'm going to be rebuilding my electrical cabinet. When I first built my cabinet over a year and a half ago, I just threw it together so I could get some electricity functional and I haven't really touched it since then and I finally have some time now to go back, clean it up and make it right. So let's check it out. So here's the current state of my electrical cabinet. I have two uh, 200 amp hour 12 volt batteries right down here. Uh, at the bottom on the left I have a four-way wall outlet with some USB chargers I have my 120 volt AC breaker box right here and then of course my all-in-one inverter charger which has been working fantastic I got a battery disconnect uh, some distribution lugs for my 24 volt electric and then up here I have a 24 volt to 12 volt step down converter which allows me to power my diesel heater so this whole thing isn't very pretty. Uh, you can see exposed wood on the top. The back's got a bunch of holes in it. This one's got a bunch of holes in it. And so what I'm gonna do is pull everything out, install some new paneling, and then I'm going to rebuild the system, clean everything up, make it look better so I don't have all these random wires all over the place. I'm gonna add this Victron Smart Shunt, which will, will allow me to actually monitor uh, how much energy my system is using or bringing in so that'll be a really handy device one thing i'm going to do on the batteries is when you hook up 12 volt batteries in series to get 24 volts the instructions say that you're supposed to um that you're supposed to balance the batteries every six months now balancing the batteries basically means you disconnect them you charge each battery separately all the way up to full capacity and then you link them together uh, in parallel again and let them sit. So that's like a whole process. It's very impractical uh, really for anybody to do that on a regular basis. Cause that means throughout that whole 24 hours you basically have no electrical system. But what I'm curious about is to take these apart and check the voltage and see if the voltage is different. To see if one battery is weaker or stronger than the other. Because then that would be the case where it's like, yeah, the, low, the weaker battery is gonna pull down the other one. So we'll take a look and see how the voltage is. But uh, otherwise everything's been working fine. I've had plenty of power. I don't have any reason to believe that there's an issue with these batteries, but we'll check it out. Right, what do we see? 13, let's see, you guys can see that on the video. This battery is 13.4 volts. Let's see what this battery comes in at. 13.4 volts, dead even. So these batteries are perfectly balanced. They're both 13.4 volts. So I'm pretty proud of these Time USB batteries. You know, I've been using them every day for the last year and a half. I used them all last summer in Texas to power my air conditioner. I mean, these things were being fully discharged, nearly fully discharged every night and then charged back up the next day uh, by my solar panels. And all I did was the initial balance when I first connected them a year and a half ago and they are still in perfect balance. And so now it's time to start deconstruction of the electrical system. I went ahead and disconnected my solar panels up on the roof. I have a circuit breaker that I can turn off that kills solar input to the inverter. And so now I will turn off all my breakers and then I will turn off my battery, uh, turn off my battery switch. and that will pretty much kill everything. So here's an update on the electrical cabinet. I got my white paneling on the side installed, my ceiling paneling installed. I notched out a access for my fan. This is the cooling fan for my induction cooktop. 
So that guy's got to be open. And then I got this white board or this panel board mounted to the back. I'm back at it, day two. The electrical project, of course, took longer than I expected. And I wanted to give you guys a glimpse into what my van looks like after I've torn out almost every tool that I have. I got parts everywhere. It's an absolute disaster. Look at this mess. Got all my tools, my wiring. Look at this. You guys always see the van when it's clean and organized, which is normally how it is but when you're in the middle of a remodel and you don't have much space anyway you just got stuff all over the place so here's a look at the cabinet here's where we got on uh kind of the first day i got the inverter powered back up so i could run my lights and all my some of my electrical appliances we got most of the low voltage done. Uh, I gotta keep going on the 110 volt circuits. So here is the updated electrical cabinet. Tell me what you guys think. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I did the orange epoxy on the floor and additionally on the back wall. I did a white panel board on each side and also I did a ceiling piece as well. I did have to notch out a hole for the vent fan in my induction countertop. So that allows air to circulate and keep the fan cool. At some point I'll add a uh, another cutout in the side and put a little cooling fan in just to help circulate air. But for now it's finished. And so I'll just kind of walk you guys through the different components here, how they all operate. So you can see what I did for a simple box truck electrical system. So again, I have the all-in-one Sun Gold Power 3000 watt inverter charger. That brings in the solar power from my panels. It brings in the 110 volt shore power if I plug in outside. And additionally, it uh, it works as an inverter, so it's connected to my batteries, which are underneath this cabinet. I have two 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour time USB batteries, two of them wired in series into a 24 volt battery bank. And so the way it works, I have all my cabling coming up out of the floor. So I have my power line coming from the battery up and over, it goes through a fuse. Uh, this is ultimately to protect the entire system. So if something happens and the batteries get shorted out uh, or there's a, a short to ground, it'll blow this fuse and it will basically just cut off all the battery power. After the fuse, it goes into this on off switch. It's always a good idea to have a on off switch so that you can easily disconnect power from the system manually. If you just turn it up, that uh, cuts the battery power, turn it back on, that allows the battery power to flow. And then after we go through the on off switch, the power comes over and it goes to this bus bar. And so the bus bar is basically just a hub where that energy can be distributed out to different components. So off the bus bar, I have one lead that's running down to my refrigerator because I do have a 24 volt refrigerator. So I got one lead coming out for the fridge. And then also on the bus bar on the top, I have one lead that's coming out it's going down over to the opposite side of my van and that's where I have my water pump and my a few LED lights and other things connected. So this lead goes down under the floor to the other side and then off of this bus bar off of this bus bar I have another lead which is going up to this step down converter. 
So when you have a 24 volt battery bank, all your regular 12 volt devices like a water pump, LED lights, max fan have to be run off a step down converter. So that's what that piece does. It powers all my 12 volt devices. So those are all the different power points that split off of my bus bar. And then from the bus bar, we go up into my Sun Gold Power Inverter Charger. And so whether it's uh, pulling power from the battery or sending power to the battery, it all runs through these uh, large cables here. So I have these two leads for my battery. And then additionally on this side, this is where my solar wires come in. So I have a positive and negative off of my 1200 watt solar bank. And then over on this side, I have AC out and also AC in. So the AC inside, this is, going, this is coming from my shore power, which runs down underneath the van and then on the other side of the van, I have a shore power plug installed. So if I wanna plug in somewhere to an outlet, then it comes right up into this device and it powers all my 110 appliances and outlets and also charges my batteries. And then over here, this is my AC output. So whether I'm running off of shore power or if I'm running off solar power, right now my battery is fully charged. If I'm running off solar power, then it converts that voltage or the battery voltage to 110. And then that 110 flows out and it goes up into my breaker box. And so this is a 120 volt breaker box. I have right now, I have four circuits uh, that are set up. I have all of my grounds over here on the ground bus. I have my neutrals up here on a neutral bus. Those are all the white wires. And then all the power wires for the breakers individually um, come from this splitter. So my 110 comes in, it goes into this distribution hub. And then from here, it's distributed out to each circuit breaker. So I have my outlets and my air conditioner, which is currently off and another bank of outlets. And this one is just an extra, it's not currently in use. And from here we go up, I have one outlet box right in here. So eventually I'll build a shelf on the wall so I can uh, put like my GoPro and all my camera batteries and, and other little devices I need to charge. They'll charge on the shelf and plug in right here. This is also where I plug in my battery charger for my electric drill and a few other things. So this outlet box stays here. And then uh, up above, I have a line here that goes up to my kitchen exhaust hood and my LED strip lights. And then over here, uh, this line right here goes up to the countertop and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So coming up to the countertop, uh, I ran this device right up, mounted it to the wall. And so this is a one, two, three, four, five, six. There's also two on the bottom, eight. This is an eight way outlet. And then also it has USB hubs on the side as well. So this is my kitchen outlet now. I have a spot to run my blender and my Instant Pot and whatever cooking appliances I wanna use. Also, I'll probably be plugging in my iPhone right up here and uh, some other things, just a convenient spot to have all my electrical devices. And then additionally, I was able to connect this outlet as well. So now I have more USBs and 110s over here. So this is my computer workstation. And so now when I'm working here on my laptop, I can run my power cable down and plug my laptop right into the wall over there. Now, if you look closely at the wiring itself, I really wanted to try to do a, a clean job and have everything look very finished and professional. So I used uh, this, this is called uh, wire loom, but it's like a braided nylon uh, material. And so it goes over, you slide it over the top of your wires. And so it gives it just kind of a, it's a little bit protective, uh, and, but then also it gives it just a nice look, a nice aesthetic, a nice finished uh, appearance. So I went ahead and added loom to all the wires. And I also of course used heat shrink to hold all the loom and the wires in place just to keep things from moving around. So all my connections have loom and then also heat shrink. And then I used uh, zip ties. I used zip ties to make little wire organizers. 
So these zip tie organizers just help space all the wiring out and it keeps stuff from getting all bunched together and tangled. So you can see all the wires follow a nice path. They're easy to trace out. This one over here looks a little, a little less organized, but overall it still, it still functions really nice. And then the thing I'm most excited about, the reason I really did this um, remodel is I wanted to add this shunt. And so this is the Victron Smart Shunt. And what this does is this is basically a battery monitor. So it allows me to look and see what kind of um, energy is flowing in and out of my system and just monitor the health of my battery. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So when we hop into the app, uh, the first device there, that's my smart shunt. We'll click on that, let it load. And then once we're inside, it shows you a percentage. So I can see right now my battery is at 100%. It shows me what the actual voltage is. And then down here, it shows me current in amps and also power in watts. So the cool thing about this is this will show me how much energy is coming into or out of the battery. So if I want to know, for example, how much energy my air conditioning is using, then when I'm running the air conditioner, I can look at the current going out and I will know how much energy the air conditioning is using. And additionally, it shows you consumed amp hours, so you can really track how much energy you're using in any given period, like say in a day or in a week. And then you can go and you can look at your trend. And I just installed this, got it hooked up yesterday, so I don't have much data yet. But over time, you'll be able to look back at this graph and figure out you know, kind of how much energy you're using in a day, how much uh, solar charge you're getting. And so it'll really help you just kind of see your overall battery usage and decide if you need to, you know, if you have plenty of battery power, or maybe you need to think about doing something to get a little more energy going. And then it's got a bunch of other cool stats here that just kind of show you all those things in more detail. So the battery monitor, overall, I'm really happy about it. Uh, because previously the only way that I really knew my battery capacity is I would have to come down to this unit and then click on the display and then look at my voltage. So previously that's really the only indicator I had of how much energy was in my system. But now I have it on a Bluetooth device so if I'm laying in bed I can pull it up and check my battery out. So pretty cool. So I'm really happy with it. I love the way the new cabinet turned out. If you look at a before and an after picture, it's a night and day difference. And since my business is installing electrical and solar for people, I wanted to have a system in my van that kind of showed uh, you know, a clean job that I do and not just something that was kind of cobbled together. And so, you know, I don't do, I don't do just scrap together systems like that for my clients, but on this one, I just installed it in a hurry two years ago and I never went back to fix it up. And so when people would ask to see my electrical cabinet, I was always self-conscious about it because it looks, it looked like crap and I wasn't proud of how it looked. So now I have a system that looks really nice. It functions really nice. Although it still functioned perfect before, but now it looks really nice. And so uh, if a client or a prospective client wants to see what kind of work I do, what kind of installations I do, now I can show them this and be pretty proud of what I got going on. So what do you guys think about the transformation? Leave a comment, tell me if you like it or not. And uh, if you have any questions about the way this operates or any of the um, components that I have in here, how they work, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks guys.